Hi everyone, Angela here. In this video, I'll show you how to shorten a pair of straight leg casual pants with a double folded stitched hem. Some of you may think that this looks okay because the hem's not touching the ground, but if I pull it down, it's actually past the sole of the shoe and well onto the floor. The pant leg just isn't wide enough to go down and around the shoe. For a standard or classic pair of pants, I find the best way to do a fitting is with shoes off and just in socks or bare feet. Start by pushing all of the excess fabric up into the pant leg, plus a little bit more than you need to. Then pull the fabric down so that the fold just touches the floor. This fold will be the finished length of the pant. Pin it in place just above the hem, with a pin going across and another pin going up and down through both layers. By pinning it this way, there's less chance that the pins will come out when the pants are being removed. From the side, you can see that the hem just sits on the ground and the front will have a small break or fold. Place the pin in the front, but it's really the back length that's most important. Check if the client has one hip higher for a difference in leg length, as you may need to pin both legs. Also, if you're shortening really narrow skinny pants, you'll need to make the length quite a bit shorter. Next, I use Taylor's Wax Chalk to mark right on the center of that back fold. You can mark the front fold as well, but it's really not necessary. Remove the pins and smooth out the pant legs. Again, this mark for the back length touches the floor and I generally use that as a rule of thumb. Fold the pants in half with the backs together, lining up the sides and the top of the waist. Smooth out the pants with the crotch facing away from you. Even if the pants are brand new, the legs aren't always the same, so don't worry if the legs aren't perfectly even at the bottom, as long as the waist is lined up at the top. So on this pant, the legs are pretty even, but I don't measure up from the bottom of the hem. I only rely on that chalk mark to tell me what the correct length is. I need to transfer that mark to the front of this pant leg. I just slide my fingernail on top until it reaches the same point and I mark it with the chalk. Place the edge of the ruler along that mark making sure it's level on both sides and then draw a straight line with a sharp chalk. This is the finished hemline. The original finish on this pant is a half inch wide double fold or turned hem with a straight running stitch. I just call it a jean hem. It's probably the easiest and most widely used hem as it neatly encloses the raw edge of the fabric. I like to make my hem slightly wider than that so there's a bit more fabric on the bottom. The ruler that I'm using is a 2 inch wide quilting ruler. It has the inches on one side and centimeters on the other. The grid lines are divided up into eighths of an inch so if I turn my ruler this way I know I have one inch down that center line from the edge and then I have one and an eighth, one and a quarter, one and three eighths, one and a half and so on. I now place my ruler one and three eighths below that first chalk line and mark across. This second line is the cut line. Always make sure there's two lines, one for the finish and one for the cut. This way you always know for sure you've added the hem allowance. There's no need to mark on the inside or use any pins or clips. Then cut all layers together. Place the ruler on the chalk line again and then shift it over just a tiny little bit to the left. Flip the top pant leg over and hold tightly against the edge of the ruler. Chalk along the edge and you'll have marks on both sides. Move the top leg out of the way and then do the same thing for the bottom leg. I'm just going to chalk this again so you can see. Now you have finish lines on all sides. That little chalk mark is where we pinned it in the front. You can ignore that because again, it's the back that's most important. On my domestic machine, I'm going to change to a clear presser foot. I just find it so much easier to sew hems with. I'll leave a link for one in the description. So if you take a closer look at the pant leg, this is the outseam and this is the inseam on the inside of the leg. This is where we want to start and finish our stitching so that the back tacking or back stitching isn't showing on the outseam of the leg. Fold the hem right on the chalk line and give it a press with your finger. This creates a crease that you can see on the inside. Fold your raw edge right up to this crease Fold it a second time and we're back on that chalk line. We now know we folded the hem allowance exactly half and half. Also check that you're lining up your seam at the side. 
Make sure you're not folding it on an angle or pulling it too far either way. Otherwise, you'll end up with a twisted hem. Now slide the hem under your presser foot. The top fold of the hem should line up with the inside of the presser foot. And for the bottom of the hem, you can use the lines on the plate as a guide, or what's better is a little magnetic edge guide. The magnet is quite strong, and I like to put the guide slightly in front of the foot. Now you have the inner foot and the guide to help stitch a nice straight hem. Fold a bit more of the hem, and then lower your needle into the fabric before you start stitching. Sew a couple of stitches, back tack, and continue all around. Keep checking that you're folding exactly half and half. If you run your finger along the bottom edge, you shouldn't feel any empty space. With enough practice, you won't need to crease your fabric first or even need to use any guides. Now we're at the other seam, which is an open seam. Make sure it's open all the way down to the hem and not fold it over. Match the seam and continue. As you're coming to the end of the stitching, you want to make sure that you sew right over the stitches that you started with. When you get to the seam, it can be a bit bulky. Have your needle down, lift your foot, tug it a little bit from the back, and lower your foot again. Overlap a couple of stitches and then back tack. Raise your needle, lift your foot and pull the hem out. While there's still tension from the machine, trim your thread on the right side of the pant and then on the inside give the threads a little tug and that'll pull the threads through and it won't show on the right side. You'll also save thread by trimming this way. Now repeat for the other leg. So you can see the finished hem is right on the chalk line. Press and steam and the chalk will disappear. The hems are nice and straight, the stitching is parallel to the edge, and the chalk is gone. The inside of the hem is looking nice and neat as well, without having to pin anything down before stitching. If you want to learn how to take in the back of a pair of jeans, make sure to watch my next video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and happy sewing.